Oh wait, it's not gonna die. Haha! <laughs> it's got five toughness, we've only got four power. They will bounce off of each other. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing Mural Shield of Argive today, and today's decklist comes to us from Patreon supporter Mango. Let's take a look at this opener. We've got three lands plus Hedron Archive is decent. Pray for a fourth land. What's this one do? This can draw cards. It's a little slow. We're gonna have to hope we hit that fourth land. Uh, this thing just gets big. This seems fine. We'll definitely need to draw into a fourth land. A little more ramp, a little more draw wouldn't be terrible. Uh, this is sadly the third attempt of filming this deck. The first one crashed, was a really cool game. The second one, moments ago, I forgot to hit record. We were about turn five, turn six, and was shaping up to be a really cool game. Like, everyone was actually doing stuff. It was very interesting. No one was stuck. And, uh, yep, forgot to hit the record button. In six years, I think that's only happened, like, one other time. I am a crazy person about making sure I'm recording. And, like, even while I'm recording a game, I'll check probably three times during the game just to make sure that it's still recording. I cut that out so you guys don't see it, but... Yep, content creator's worst nightmare. Film something cool, forget to hit the button. I suppose it's not the worst nightmare, but it's pretty annoying. Pretty annoying as a content creator. I was in such a good mood too. I had such great commentary in the last one. Oh, such great stories. <laughs> uh, there's a one drop anyway. That's cool. I guess we have two one drops. Let's uh, let's play the planes. Get the paladin class in. It's nice and durable. I like that spells your opponents cast cost one more during your turn. I got someone with this in paper a couple weeks ago. Uh, they were trying to cast something on my end step. I don't remember what. And. Uh, I'm like, can you pay the one? And they're like, nope, you can't do it. Sadly, it's not uh, like Chancellor of the Annex, which says Chancellor of the Annex is not an additional cost. It just counters it. And you can't really be overly nice with that card. I think there's also the elephant that does the same thing. And uh, you can't be overly nice with that card because then that card just won't work the way that it's supposed to. Like, it is not a tax. It is a trigger that you need to pay for. And if you don't, it's going to the graveyard. Opponent gets themselves a Grateful Apparition. Uh, we do catch a creature. I was really hoping for a land just so we don't have to play this uh, are we going to get our lands in time game. It's uh, not one of my favorite games to play. Uh, we'll cast it though since it's on curve. Valiant Veteran. Is that Brothers War? What set is that? I can't tell anymore. Uh, two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Other soldiers you control get plus one, plus one. Pay five. Exile from your graveyard. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So nice little anthem creature for soldiers. Uh, so very solid for two mana honestly. And I like that little graveyard ability later in the game. Although, like, for five mana, two plus one plus one counters would be cool. Make it six or seven mana and make it, like, two or three counters, right? Like, make it enough to, like, really put some punch on things. Ooh, that's a spicy one. Caravan Escort? Is he also doing a level up thing? I played level up tribal, I don't know, a week and a half ago, and that was an interesting deck. It was cool, and I got to play a lot of creatures that you just don't get to play in Commander, because... Commander has really become about mana efficiency, and level up creatures are basically some of the most inefficient mana creatures in the game. That said, a few of them have really cool abilities, and there is just something satisfying about leveling one up all the way. So they are fun, they are not particularly efficient, a couple of them are powerful uh, when you do get them leveled all the way up, which is cool too. So it's not like you're doing it for nothing, but... Uh, relative to what they do, they are very much overcosted. There's Runo Stromkirk coming in, yeah. Opponent to get a Stitcher Supplier, let's see if there's anything in the grave. There's a Garuda and a Kraken. They get the Kraken back. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Stitcher Supplier over to Xeno. There's the planes we were looking for, thank God. Alright. Should have a decent game now. Uh, do we just play this thing? We'll just play this thing. This seems like it could be good late. Uh, just because of that activated ability. Just kind of running it out there early. If someone drops a board wipe, that's probably not where you want to be. Uh, what is this thing? This is a 2-2. Two -two? I'm not going to trade our 2-2. Two -two. We can poke Xeno, though. Equal to the number of creatures you control. We only control two. Why is it a three? Oh, right. It gets plus one, plus one from that. Ha-ha! Soldiers. Right. Anyway, let's take a read of our commander. It's Mural Shield of Argive. Four mana for a 3-4. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. That is Grand Abolisher text. And also, when Mural attacks, create X11 colorless soldier artifact creature tokens, where X is the number of soldiers you control. Uh, so a little bit of Adeline in there, too. Spits out tokens in a hurry. Now, interestingly, in the last game where I forgot to press the button, uh, opponent had an Arcbound Crusher in play, 
And those artifacts all triggered the Arcbound Crusher. So that thing was starting to get really big. It was up to like a 9-9 or something with Trample. And what I realized is Arcbound Crusher is a really good idea against people looking to abuse treasures. Treasures are kind of everywhere now and like in some sense are sort of game breaking. And uh, Arcbound Crusher for four mana, you get a thing that's just going to be giant. So even if they make 20 extra mana in a turn, if none of that mana is spent killing the Crusher, you're probably going to be able to put some real big damage on them. So that is kind of cool. That is something to think about. I don't know that you just jam that everywhere, but it, I, I think we are getting to a point where you need to start thinking about answers to treasures because they've just kind of become a problem. I faced Kristen in a game probably about two weeks ago, and by turn six, she had made, I believe, 20 extra treasure mana, right? And, and that wasn't even Dockside or Smothering Tide. She was playing some Rakdos thing that cared about treasures. I forget what it was, right? And it's just like, how do you beat that? And really, the answer is you don't unless you have some sort of hate piece in play, unless you yourself have also made 20 extra mana by turn six. On turn six, she was taking like five actions a turn, right? And I don't remember where I was at, but it definitely wasn't that many. Two, maybe. Uh, opponent did just flip their Runo into Krothis, Lord of the Deep. That's always a problem. Uh, luckily, they don't have anything. To, oh, they copied a Stitcher Supplier. Okay. Uh, when the scary stuff shows up, that will be a problem, though. And that is a reason that uh, someone's going to need to lay down a board wipe is what's going to need to happen, because uh, this just gets overwhelming. In the meantime, play this planes. Uh, play the Hedron Archive. Definitely want to get the ramp going. I don't think we get etherized here, but uh, we're going to send a little attack into Flintlock since they are quite a bit ahead. God, I wish this made three. If this was a Thran Dynamo, we could cast the Replicating Ring and it would be glorious. Sad. Very sad. Oh, Thran Dynamo is so good. The fact that you only lose one on casting it is just so efficient. Losing two into the Hedron Archive, it's not bad, right? But it's, it's really... You're going to have to wait till next turn to probably do something cool. Thran Dynamo... Depending on what you have, you can go like turn four, Thran Dynamo, then use it to cast the Feast and Famine all in the same shot. I've done things like that plenty in my life. Well, there's a Mirrodin Besiege on the battlefield. Watch out for that one. Chose Mirin. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, create a 1 1 colorless mirror artifact token. Uh, okay, they didn't go the other one. The other one just wins the game if they have enough artifacts. Gotta be real careful with that one. There's a Bloodline Pretender, though. Interesting card. Changeling enters the battlefield as creature type. Uh, whenever another creature of the chosen type enters, put a plus one, plus one counter on Bloodline Pretender. Probably not something I'd run in most of the tribal decks that I build, but, like, if you're trying to build a weird tribe that's not well supported, uh, definitely solid for that. I tend to like big flying tribes, so for me, like, Bloodline Pretender, eh, not really necessary. Angels and dragons have a lot of support. Even allies, like, you know, there could be more ally support, but there are surprisingly more allies than you think they are, considering they're only in... What, two blocks, I think? Oh, I really hate that there were no allies in the third Zendikar block. So frustrating. Uh, opponent's going to swing into us because we are tapped out. Uh, looks like they're spreading around a little bit. I am concerned about the next Runo turn, though. Uh, I'm going to give this thing the old read. I've seen it a bunch, but I haven't played it yet, so I kind of forget what it does. So, Sanctuary Warden, four mana for a 5-5, flying, enters the battlefield with two shield counters. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may remove a counter from a creature or planeswalker you control. If you do, draw a card and create a citizen token. We are definitely going to need to draw some cards. Uh, I would love a way to generate more tokens. Ooh, what's interesting is the Replicating Ring can uh, put tokens on itself. Like, I, I don't think that we'll ever get to popping the Replicating Ring, but... So, I think we can just use that to kind of feed the Sanctuary Warden. Seems like a very reasonable play. Land off the top, and I think we can do both in the same shot. I have to say, I do like Paladin class. Honestly, I kind of like a lot of the class cards. Like, in most cases, they're not best in slot for most decks, but they are nice mana sinks, and the fact that most of them are pretty cheap to get in, uh, like, I don't run a lot of one-drops in my paper decks, because, like, the best one-drops in Commander tend to be really expensive. That's a lot of your tutors. Esper Sentinel isn't the cheapest thing ever. Sensei's Divining Top is usually very expensive. Mana Vault. I remember this. This is one that I wanted to get going in uh, Level Up Tribal. Uh, so D-Man, he's playing four-color Level Up Tribal. We should probably take a look at what our opponents are doing here. Uh, since we started talking about him, he's playing Ludvek Necroalchemist and Siddhar Kondo of Jumora. Always the most confusing ability. Flanking creatures your opponents control with without flying or reach. Can't block creatures with power two or less. It's a weirdly disruptive ability. And I have to read it every single time I see it. It's been out for, what, five years? So anyway, he's got a little Level Up thing going on over there. Yeah, he's going to need mana. 
like a lot more mana. Feel bad for having to restart the game. He had a Mirari's Wake in the last one. Something that you very much need for uh, level up tribal. Here's a Varagoth. Those are pretty good. Yeah, Runo into d -Manny. Makes another Citrus Supplier. They're going to have a well-stocked graveyard. Dream Eater is a card. Garuda's still in there. Mills again. Baleful Beholder. Oh, God. Yep, not sure I'm thrilled about that one either. 1-1 one, one coming our way. Can't do much about it. I am thinking about trying this thing out in uh, Tap Creature Tribal. It is surprisingly hard to do any more than one damage to a target, uh, especially with red cards. Kamal is really about the only good option. How much mana you need to sink into this thing, though? Uh, oh, we'll figure it out in a second. Soul Ring, I think, is going to help us a lot here. That is a sight for sore eyes. So let's see. We use four here to cast a Replicating Ring. Replicating Ring will make one with one floating. Uh, tell me we're still one short. Disappointing. So in that case, I think we cast the Replicating Ring so we can start trying to get counters on it. Uh, and then we cast the Mural. And that'll be a nice bit of protection when we untap so we know opponents can't mess with our stuff as we're trying to do things. Um, do we attack here? Death Toucher over there is going to not send us in over there. d Manny is playing level up tribal, so we'll probably take it like a little easy on him. 2-2, two, two, nothing really doing. You know what? I'm going to swing into Flintlock because I don't think he's going to... Mm, he just blocks with the supplier. Does that do anything? No, that just mills him more. Okay. Looks like d Manny it is. I know we could cast a recruitment officer, but as I talked about, I think this is going to be better like after the board wipe when we need some advantage of some kind. So just going to kind of hang on to it. I've been meaning to try this thing out in my angel deck and I uh, just haven't gotten around to it. Don't get to play angels all that often, mostly because I have a lot of decks and, you know, just been trying to play some different stuff, change things up. I feel like when I play decks in paper now, especially, I'm like always quote unquote, I mean, even when I'm on the channel, like I'm always quote unquote working on something. Like I'm never just kind of playing. I always have like a goal of what I'm doing, like with angels or something like that. It's usually I'm trying to test like two or three new cards that I jammed into the deck. And uh, sadly, this one just hasn't come up in the uh, hierarchy yet. Hanger back, Walker. Seems good. Uh, I really hope we can find a land next turn. I don't want to fall two turns behind the land count. Two lands behind the turn count. I think that's what I meant to say. Anyway, we should uh, continue taking a look at what our opponent's playing. Uh, we've got Illegal Xeno piloting Jetfire and Genius Scientists. Uh, he did say it's some sort of artifact combo deck. Uh, involves animation module. He has the other module, Fabrication module. Here's a level up onto Brimstone Mage. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when we have some openings over there, we're going to want to get some damage in. We don't want to let him get too far along since he is playing a combo deck. Uh, Flintlock is probably the threat I would say the most right now just because... Uh, the backside of this thing is really insane. They are playing Runo Stromkirk. I'm not going to read it because it is a giant block of text. Uh, we've looked at it a bunch on the channel. I think it was the most popular commander from that set. So it has come up a bunch. Cool card, though. But, oi, the reading. So much reading. Uh, opponent plays the thing. It's going to proliferate. Yeah. Okay. So they got a little bit of proliferate going. I had about four or five proliferate cards in my level up deck. And, you know, I had pondered whether Atraxa... Uh, would be a better fit for the commander. Someone left me a comment thinking they thought so. But on the other hand, I don't know, right? Like, we were making absurd amounts of mana, like Christmas Land amounts of mana in that game. And that's going to... Having 30 extra mana is going to be much faster than Atraxa proliferating one level at a time. Later in the game, you know, you probably get, like, two to three proliferates in a turn. But even still, that's, like, pretty slow for a lot of them. Uh, opponent's gonna shoot a supplier, but sadly, it just, uh... When it dies, it just mills them more. I did want to add up the mana on this thing. What does this thing take? So three mana to get it in. Seven mana to do one damage to a target. God, 15 mana to do three damage to a target? Yeah, just so overcosted. The level up cost on this thing should be like one and a red. There's a deadly relic. Where's that going? Oh, on the Toski. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, that totally makes sense. Toski is very much a deadly relic type of card. The thing just spirals, right? You just draw a million cards, and because it's indestructible, so difficult to get rid of. It doesn't die in combat. You basically need Swords or Path or a Deadly Rock. So it just stays there and continues to draw cards. Uh, it's almost as bad as, like, a Ristic Study. Maybe some days worse, right? It's in a worse color where, like, green generally makes too much mana, so when you start beating at cards, they just do everything. Blue assuming mono blue, has a tougher time producing mana, especially early in the game. You know, you're looking at basically only artifacts. So, you know, drawing a million cards with Rhystic Study doesn't necessarily mean the game. 
Uh, people can out-tempo you if they've just if they're producing more mana and take more game actions and stuff like that. So, like, you'll see the blue deck with nine cards in hand or something like that. Their limiting factor is always, like, mm, they have five lands in play. So you're good for a little while. Like, you're good until they start finding the ramp pieces. Uh, where with the green deck, you know, they're already three mana ahead of the turn count. And then they start drawing four extra cards a turn. That is a problem. That's Bajookabog targeting D-Manny. Gonna get rid of a Nyx Blue Mansion. Yeah, I can dig it. Yeah, Nyx Blue Mansion's probably one I should have jammed into that deck. For doing the uh, make as much mana as humanly possible thing. That does suck for him, though, because that's that's a card you want when you're uh, trying to get those things leveled up. Yeah, I would really love to find an answer for this Runo. The rest of their board, I don't... I mean, Varagoth's pretty good. Varagoth's definitely pretty good. Flintlock just go no attacks? Wow. Did not attack with the Varagoth. Or their flying thingy. Maybe probably concerned about us? Arcane Signet? That would have to be my guess. But the good news for us... Our commander's in, they can't cast abilities, they can't cast spells or activate abilities during our turn, so there is very little that we are afraid of. I think Maze of Ith is like one of the few things that still works, like land abilities still happen. Uh, Replicating Ring's gonna get a counter. I assume, so this is one of Mango's decks, and Mango is a very good deck builder. Uh, I assume that this Replicating Ring was intentional with the Sanctuary Warden. Like, that feels like Mango's on that level, that like that might might have happened, and I love it. Because I haven't really seen this. I mean, I haven't played this thing yet, and I'm very excited about it, which is what we're about to do. Um, but we're, we are going to get... Mm, are we cracking that Hedron Archive? Let's get the Mind Stone in first. Then cast the Sanctuary Warden. Use the Replicating Ring mana. Probably should have tapped differently, but what can you do? Sanctuary Warden comes in. Uh, we're going to use the ability. Oh, it doesn't work. Has to be a creature or planes. I mean, we're still going to draw a card. Still got to draw a card. Come on, land. Remove a counter. Done. Precinct Captain is okay. It's not really what we were looking for. If we tapped differently, we could cast it, but sadly we did not. So next turn, I'm thinking about cracking the Hedron Archive, maybe the Mind Stone. Uh, this turn, we need to think about some attacks. Oh, that's so disappointing. I really thought we could do this thing. I thought this was going to be magical Christmas land. <laughs> I mean, so we have mana. Do we just go full aggro with our commander? I'd prefer to not lose it to the... Uh, Varagoth? I think that's what we do, though. Because them tutoring is kind of scary for me. I'm not, like, thrilled about that. So we attack. We make X-1-1 soldiers, where X is the number of soldiers you control. What was that? About four? And they're two twos? Solid. And next turn, we can level this thing up, make them three threes. Stitcher in front of the 10-10. Yeah. And, ooh, they're trying to get their commander dead. Okay. Okay. Oh, wait, it's not going to die. Ha <laughs> ha. It's got five toughness. We've only got four power. They will bounce off of each other. But... We eat a Stitcher. <laughs> oh, no Trample in White. So disappointing. <laughs> Stitcher's Flyer, they mill three more cards. I feel like we could have de did a lot more with that turn. At least we're like we're cutting down like little bits from them, right? Evasion's going to be uh, a key selling point here. Let's take a peek at this deck list real quick. Uh, solid Mana Curve. Definitely like the Mana Curve. I like that there are a couple six drops. We got one seven drop in Elish Norn. Um, you know, a lot of times I see people going too mana efficient these days and that is something to be cautious of like you know if your curve like basically stops at five in every color there's a couple powerful six drops because that's it's kind of the way they engineer standard like they make the really powerful stuff at six and uh you just lose a lot by having no six drops in your deck but anyway that's not what's happening here opponent's going to disallow this altar of dementia which seems like a fantastic idea because uh nothing ever nothing good ever came from a sack outlet and especially that one that's a time twister that's going to be a fresh seven all right how about it Sadly, we uh, did not get this thing into play, so we're not going to get a look at it, but I will take the draw seven here. All right, fresh hand. Toma Legends for some card draw. Definitely like that. Uh, we got a couple more lands, which is great. Ooh, Gold Knight Commander. I had a whole spiel about this in the last game. So I think this card's really interesting because I don't think it was really on anyone's radar until Winota came out. At least it definitely wasn't on mine. Uh, and I don't really recall ever seeing it much before that. And like, you know, going back five or six years, tokens were a very popular strategy and it's just not a card I ran into very much. And then after Winota started seeing it in a lot of decks, even beside Winota, a lot of white token decks run this thing now. And, oh, I did something crazy with a Gold Knight Commander a couple weeks ago. Uh, I was playing a paper, I was playing my Ishin deck. So maybe about turn five or so, turn five, turn six. Uh, I attacked with Newer Kranko with the Blackblade Reforged, got like 11 tokens. Then the following turn, 
maybe it was two turns later, uh, had Gold Knight Commander and Ishin in play. So when you attack with the Cranko again, you get 11 more tokens, which triggers the Gold Knight 11 times. Uh, and because all the triggers are doubled, the second Cranko trigger, he's at like 30 power or something. And then makes like 30 tokens triggering Gold Knight that many more times. And also I was attacking with the 11 previous tokens. So I had more than 10 creatures attacking that all got like plus 40 or something like that. Like just insane, insane amounts of damage. It was really cool. Anyway, Gold Knight Commander, really interesting card and definitely been making the rounds in uh, mono white token decks of late. And... Uh, I mean, this is basically going to be the hammer for us. If we want to wrap this game up, dropping this thing with the amount of creatures we have in play, if no one drops a board wipe, we are going to be putting a hurting on some people. Oh, uh, the other one that hits like a hammer in this deck is, uh, Cathar's Crusade. I was on Beth, Queen of Cardboard stream a few weeks ago, and, uh, she killed me with Mural on, like, turn five, but it was largely because of Cathar's Crusade. Like, she's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to hit you with, like, three creatures, and, uh... Uh, I laugh because D-Manny proliferated our replicating ring. Um, and the Akroan War. How about that? What's this one do? Choose target players until your next turn. Each creature they control attacks the other chosen player. Oh, yeah. Okay. That seems like a great idea. Yeah. So uh, me and Flitlock got a battle out here. Have a little battle to the death. Love it. The name is Spock. If we don't battle to the death, they will kill us both. Our army is much bigger than his, so he's probably looking to drop a board wipe. And with the Varagoth, that is actually a thing that he can do. So that is a concern. Might be starting over. <laughs> Three damage any target. Oh no, shoots our Anthem one. Yeah, that's frustrating. Got this thing all the way leveled up. Anyway, yeah. Uh, she got a Cathar's Crusade and she's like, oh, this is going to be like 7 or 10 damage. No, it was like 30 because of Cathar's Crusade with all the tokens coming in. Cathar's Crusade, also insane in this deck. Honestly, from what I've seen of Mural, this might be a mono-white commander that I build. Now, sadly, I just took apart my mono-white shell and turned it into uh, Duke Older in paper, uh, which, fun deck, has trouble closing the game out if you don't draw Inferno Titan or Red Dragon, I noticed. So that might be a concern. Maybe I just need to throw a mob rule in there or something. But there's a scroll rack for opponent. Uh, that is a little bit of mana they burn, so not on the Varagoth into board wipe plan. Just that they could go for a Deluge. They've got the mana for that. Uh, they've got enough mana for Damnation, too. Whirler Rogue is not a Damnation. Gonna make some blockers. That's fair. Uh, I do think that this commander is very much just like, you better have removal for it, because it's gonna spiral. It's not quite as bad as Najila, but definitely several turns slower, but not that far away from it either. And the fact that they can't do anything during your turn, pretty good. Uh, honestly, because you're making so many tokens, sack outlets can be a thing in this deck. That is certainly something to consider. Oh, they uh, recycled it back. I was going to take a peek at their uh, Altar of Dementia. So with Altar of Dementia, you know, if you're spitting out a bunch of tokens here, if someone tries to Vampiric Tutor or any of that style of tutor, uh, you can just mill them off the top. Or if, like, there's an Oracle of Moldiah or something where you can see their top card, um, you just be like, nope, not having that. Uh, it's actually, like, a pretty powerful thing to do. Now, the mana-producing ones... Actually, that's a great point. The mana-producing ones are a great way to be able to make that extra mana you need to really close out a game. I think it was in the last one I was talking about, like, Mono White's problem is still just that, like, even with Mural, who is a top echelon Mono White commander, it is very good, uh, you still just don't produce mana as well and as consistently as the other colors, and we are heavily relying on artifacts. If Vandal Blast goes off, we in trouble. So that's all a thing, but... Dropping down a sack outlet with, like, this board, Ashnod's Altar, that's a lot of extra mana that allows us to play at the pace of, like, the green deck at the table. Um, and that's definitely a thing. This one's flying, so we can't do anything about that. Oh, no, we can. We can do something about that. We can block with this and give up the counter? Mm, how do we feel about that? I mean, honestly, if we just... Wait, they only have three blockers. I think we just take it. Do we try to kill the Varagoth? I think we just take it. I think Flintlock's gonna die on our turn. If we drop the Gold Knight Commander. I just, I think that's how it's going to be. I don't care how's it gonna be. But yeah, uh, a card came up in the last game and one that I've talked about a bunch. If you're playing mono white, I would definitely run Nyx Lotus. It's slow. It's awkward. Sometimes it gets shot and none of that is great. But later in a game after turn six, turn seven, turn eight, 
Uh, it allows you to make three, four, five, or more extra mana a turn. It allows you to play at the pace of a green deck with a mana doubler or anyone with a mana doubler, a Cabal Coffers, something like that, right? If you're trying to build a strong deck that wants to close things out efficiently, like, you know, being five mana ahead of the turn count is a really good way to do that starting around turn six, turn seven. Probably more so by turn eight more consistently, but brings it back to our turn. Uh, there's a replicating ring trigger that puts us up to three. I don't know that this game will go long enough for us to get all the way there. Unless D-Manny wants to help us out a bit. What is this one? Uh, Guardian of Nubinalia. Two mana, two, two within list. As this creature attacks, you may tap a non-attacking creature you control. Without summoning sickness, when you do, add its power to this creature's power. That is weird. When you enlist a creature, scry two. Not terrible. Discard a card. It gains indestructible until end of turn. Tap it. Not awful. Not awful. A lot of cool abilities on there. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to feel about it just yet, but it seems cool. Anyway, let's go ahead, play a Plains. We have fortunately got a lot of Artifact Ramp, which is very nice. Uh, let's get the Tome of Legends in, start getting encounters in that thing, keep the card draw coming. We'll draw with the Tome of Legends just to see if there's anything interesting. Uh, I guess we'll go with the Field of Rune. I'm not seeing any crazy lands in play that we need to shoot. Oh, uh, there's Academy Runes over there. Might need to think about that one at some point. Uh, we draw another land, maybe not what we were looking for right there, but helpful nonetheless if this game goes long, or if we need to discard a card to that other thing. Let's get the Gold Knight Commander. Uh, this is actually a good time to level this thing up, I think. I think that's what we're doing. And then we just send everything into Flintlock and see what happens. Not that we have a choice in the matter anyway. Uh, that's Toma Legends, Mural, and Sanctuary Warden. We're going to leave that shield counter on there just in case it dies for some reason. It'd be nice to have a creature should a board wipe go off uh we've got plenty of cards and toma legend is going to do some work for us no that would trigger the thing an additional time though hopefully they don't survive at one this is a lot of soldiers though so i feel like this is going to be lethal flintlock said my bad misplayed several times yeah i think they really wanted to be on baragoth go get a board wipe um and just slow the game down you know keep us off of our nonsense has there been there's been very little removal this thing, this game. I think it's just been this thing, which uh, will most definitely come in our direction. Uh, they are 10-10s, ten so we need three of them to get through. I think we have three of them that can get through. I was talking about Mono White's problems earlier. Mana is one of them. The other problem is still that, like, if a board wipe goes off... Ooh, yeah, we got, we got some extra damage in there. <laughs> Negative 34. But if a board wipe goes off, uh, it's going to take a minute for us to rebuild, right? And that's always sort of the problem with Mono White, is that you're, everything you do is very telegraphed. Uh, opponents usually get a chance to respond to it at sorcery speed. They kind of see it all coming. A Chroma's Will helps combat that, and True Conviction helps combat that. Elish Norn a little bit, also. Those are basically your, like, three big explosive plays, the, like, I need damage right now kind of cards. But beyond that, you're basically at the mercy of, like, not getting your board wiped a million times. And... A lot of the paper games that I've been playing lately, doesn't matter what deck I'm playing. I don't know, 60% of those games, the game ends and I only have lands in play. Like, I die because everything I play has been destroyed. Like, there's been four, five board wipes and you just have nothing left. And uh, Mono White really doesn't have answers for that type of meta. So, like, you know, if you're playing the white deck, yeah, you probably draw a protection spell and maybe that gets you through a board wipe. You know, if you don't intuitively kill the next player that has a board wipe and they're able to resolve that board wipe, then you get crushed. Then you try to rebuild. And then if another one happens after that, like you're mono white, so you probably just haven't drawn the level of cards to refill at that point. And like it's gotten a little better. Esper Sentinel is a super helpful card. Skull Clamp is insane in this deck. Skull Clamp is really good in a lot of decks. But, you know, if your card draw piece didn't stay in play... It's just tough, right? You are just at a remarkable disadvantage to the other colors. Like if the green deck cast Arishgar's Expertise once and drew five or six or more cards, right? Like the things you have to do to draw five cards in white is a lot. And more than anything, I mean that you need those things to stay in play for a while, right? Like you can cast an Esper Sentinel early on when I played Esper Sentinel and still sometimes occasionally people just shoot it right away. They're like, nope, not dealing with that. Not feeding you cards. So... We talk about mana as probably one of the biggest resources in this format. I actually think, like, time is your most restrictive resource, or at least it can be, right? If five board wipes go off, sure, then you have all the time ever to, uh, you know, like, get a plan going, assuming that it'll survive. But 
I would say in the average game that tends to be where there tends to be less board wipes. So, you know, there's two types of games. You have the game with five board wipes or you have the game with zero, right? And in the game with zero, you do not have a lot of time to do things. And that's sort of unfortunate. But in the game with like five board wipes, Esper Sentinel isn't allowed the time it needs to be an effective card draw source. So uh, I actually think time is sort of the resource that no one talks about. Maybe I need to do a video on that. Uh, like Phyrexian Arena is the classic. Oh no! Oh, opponent's gonna shoot our Gold Knight Commander. Now we don't have crazy damage everywhere. Oh god. Got with the Kamal ability. So sad, Brimstone Mage. Why? Well, I think we're just gonna have to. Uh... I mean, we're. If we shoot that. Yeah, we probably just need to shoot that. That is unfortunate. Now we need, like, another big uh, hammer that we can drop on our opponents. Because. That was going to make everything so big that even if they block, we could still at least kill one player because there are a lot of tokens over here. Now we don't really have that. So I think this game's going to turn into a little bit of a grind. Ooh, what we can do. This is flying. Do there flyers over here? Does not have flying. None of those have flying. Sacrifice. The Transmogra put a plus one plus one counter. It becomes an artifact. I think we blast Zeno. I feel like Zeno is probably pretty close. d Manny has a lot of colors in his deck doing the partner thing. Um... Which is always scary, right? Because you just have a lot of tools at your disposal, but... Uh, ooh, some Rari's weak. Maybe... Uh, we probably gotta shoot that. That can't stay. I mean, he's playing level up, so, like, it probably could, and it'd probably be fine, but... Not gonna take our chances here. Yeah, I was trying to get this one in. I think I was in my list. Uh, add two level up counters to each creature you control. With level up. 6-6 six, six, first strike. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. What's this? Oh, that one's got flying. Okay. So what I think we can do... I think we can level this thing all the way up, and we give the flyer double strike. And we might be able to get Xeno with that. It's tough to say exactly. But I feel a lot better if we could catch a uh, piece of protection somewhere. Replicating ring, ticking up. Revelant Hoplite is not that. Does it make more sense to cast? I mean, I don't know how much mana we have here. So let's play a planes. Let's activate Toma Legends. I might crack the Mind Stone. I'm not sure yet. We draw another planes. Gross. Uh, how much mana do we have left? So that's 10, 11. It'll be 5 to do that. It'll be another 5 to get that one. So we go 5 and 5. I kind of want to get Savior of Olenbach in because then we can get the Golden Knight Commander back. Uh, we'll have enough to do that. So we'll crack the Mind Stone also. Odric Master Tactician is a magic card. Uh, but we are going to go on the plan we talked about. So let's do this thing. So we're on the uh, bottom level of this one, level 3. For each attacking creature and gains double strike. Uh, everything in a Xeno. Combo deck and all. Uh, Paladin class on the bottom. Targeting the Sanctuary Warden. Toma Legends counter doesn't really matter. Sanctuary. And Mural Trigger should make this crazy. Oh, that's like 14 more tokens or something. Uh, not use that ability. Use that ability. Uh, it's a 2020 with Double Strike. Yeah, that seems pretty good. <laughs> seems pretty good. I sent them all just because I, I wanted to be sure. I know we could probably spread it around a little bit. But with the uh, gold knight going down, just wanted to be, wanted to be safe. Yeah, that's why I like paladin class. That last, that last mode is nice late in the game. Uh, and the decks that I run it, you know, I don't tend to be running go wide all that much. Occasionally I do, uh, but even you know, just a couple plus two or plus three with the double strike tends to be very good. Uh, Zeno goes to negative sixty-seven. We are gonna generous gift the Mirari's wake because if anything bad happens, it's gonna be because of the Mirari's wake. So they get an elephant. And we pass the turn like that. Leave up with planes like we're holding a path to exile, but in reality, this is probably going to kill our next best thing. Actually, we only have tokens, but... Cycles of Land. Oh, uh, d Manny was trying to get him the block, but he's like, there was no point, but he realized that they could have killed the commander. Yep, that'd definitely be a thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, this turns off to various protection, comeuppance, and settle the wreckage during our turn, which is uh, also Cyclonic Rift. Those are some name brand cards that'll blow you out real bad. So, uh, I don't know. You just feel pretty good when Mural's in play. <laughs> I played a game a while back. It was, uh, it was actually right before the pandemic hit. It was uh, January 2020, Magic Fest Austin. And uh, I was playing my Angel deck, and I was just trying out Grand Abolisher in my Angel deck. Stopped seven removal spells on the Angels because opponents kept trying to cast them during my turn. I'm like, nope, can't cast it. And then for some reason, when it got back to their turn, they just didn't cast the removal spell at the thing they were planning to shoot, right? Like, it was the weirdest thing, and it happened a lot in that game. And I'm like, huh, 
Maybe I should have been ran, running Grand Abolisher this whole time, so my angels don't get blown out everywhere I go. Uh, Demanding proliferating stuff, replicating ring, taking up. I think I've seen this go off once. You either need to get it in very early and have a long game, or uh, be doing some proliferating to really get it going. Tome of Legends gets another counter, though, but in this deck, that probably won't matter all that much just because it's going to be one a turn anyway. I do like running Manifold Key occasionally with Tome of Legends just so you can get an extra untap in there if you need it. And that unblockable mode late in the game, you know, right around now, is uh, pretty helpful. We got this one. Uh, I think I cut this one from my deck because there are actually a lot of level up creatures, or at least like a pretty good amount of them. Shoots a token. Um, to the point where I had to cut some. There were too many creatures in the deck. Had like 50 at one point. I'm like, well, that's not going to work. So I cut some of the worst ones, kept some of the best ones. Here comes the Grateful Apparition and the other flyer. That's got Flying and Vigilance. Yeah, proliferates some stuff, including our replicating ring. It's on seven now. Oh, my God. Now it's on eight. I think we're going to see it go off. <laughs> He's saying GG. Yeah. It goes off. We get eight replicating rings. How about that? Didn't think that one was going to happen. He just scoops right there. Yeah. Uh, there was just a lot of damage on board. I was gonna, I was gonna try to do this thing though, just to pump everything up. But yeah, uh, neat little game from us. No board wipes, which is really the key, right? Like when no one wipes the board, yeah, you can excel with them on a white deck. When someone wipes the board, mm, it gets a lot harder. Gets a lot, lot harder. Like I said, I really think Flintlock should have gone Varagoth into board wipe. And uh, wait, does Varagoth put it on top, or does it put it in your hand? Oh, it does put it on top. Uh, which means they wouldn't have been able to do it right on that turn. So I don't know when they drew the Varagoth, but maybe getting that going a turn sooner may have been the thing to do. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, that the point stands, right? Someone's got to wipe the board against us, or they at least got to get our commander out of play. This deck does just spiral. Like I said, it almost feels like a slower Najila with uh, more protection from that uh, Grand Abolisher effect. As far as changes to this deck, pretty tight. I don't know that there was a lot that I would change. Um... There's a couple cards that I've gone back to a lot recently that I'd probably use if I were playing this deck. Uh, first is Mother of Ruins, because Mother of Ruins is just insane, right? Like, I have a whole video script that I'm working on that'll come out soon. Uh, but, like, Mother of Ruins basically blanks every piece of spot removal until someone has two, right? <laughs> it's just absurd what it does. And for one mana, just insane, right? Anyway, um, so I'd probably run that. In some sense, like... I almost think a card, and like I try to get this card in the decks, and it's usually, it's never really best in slot, but uh, I think Angelic Renewal could be solid solid for this deck because you just need to keep your commander in play. Like I said, in paper, I've been having trouble keeping anything in play. Um, so, you know, choose the protection effects you like. This is essentially a protection effect. Uh, brought back as powerful in mono white. You can do some land stuff with it too. Same sort of idea. If this one's nice, could you just throw it out there and then you just, it just waits there until you need it. Oh, and that's the thing too. Uh, I believe you can combo with Sun Titan and a Sack Outlet, I think. And so th my next point was going to be Sack Outlets. Ashnod's Altar uh, is going to allow you to make a lot of extra mana for this deck. I don't know. I might run the Phyrexian one. I know they they tend to be kind of expensive in paper. I don't know when the last reprint of that one was. But uh, yeah, Ashnod's Altar is definitely going to pump up the power of this deck a little bit. Might potentially run it over Gilded Lotus. I like Gilded Lotus, but it can be slow and clunky. Uh, I'd probably get a Nyx Lotus. I'd definitely run Nyx Lotus over Gilded Lotus. Although, there's a trade-off there, right? The trade-off is that when you have a good board state, you make 10 extra mana a turn. When you don't, you make zero. And it does come in tapped and get shot, like we talked about, which is all a thing. Uh, and I've really been going back to using Comeuppance and Settle the Wreckage a lot lately. Again, it's not specific to this deck, but I've just... I find that things go much smoother when I have those in my deck. And, uh have that sort of answer where you're just like, oh, you're going to attack me? Okay, blow you out. Cool. Um, oh, another card. Oh, another card not in here. Dolmen Gate is going to be very good because you do need to attack with your commander, and if someone has big blockers out, uh, they will just block and kill your commander. So get a Dolmen Gate going. Cathar's Crusade's already in here. That one's crazy. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. Like, it's looking pretty tight. Uh, those are just a couple things that, like, just very generic things that I've kind of gone back to. I'm like, oh, man, these cards are pretty good. I don't know why I ever stopped running these. Usually it's just to test out new stuff, but they don't always make their way back in. But anyway, yeah, Mural is a very nice mono-white commander. Again, it's mono-white, so it still has a lot of the mono-white problems. But if it stays in play, you can do what we just did in this game, and that just steamroll everyone. So that was pretty cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe.
Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel, vote on which decks I play next, or if you want to get some good games to Spell Table, be sure to check out my Patreon at the link below.